In this video, we will learn how to paint Toronto's evening skyline in watercolor. Did you know that Toronto is home to one of the most diverse skylines in the world? Many of my students slash artists struggle with capturing the essence of a city skyline, especially when it comes to blending colors and achieving their depth in the work. The key is to simplify and capture and keep it loose and not to focus on details. I will guide you through the step-by-step -step process of sketching the skyline choosing the right colors and applying techniques for blending and layering to create this vibrant piece. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly updates from my channel and uh, let's get started. As for the supply goes, I'm using Bowang um, Hot Press uh, Smooth Surface which is um, 300 GSM and as for the paint goes, I use Winsor Newton Professional Grade Watercolor Paints and you can use any paper or paints if you want which are comfortable to you. And um, let's sketch our reference um, in our watercolor paper. And uh, when it comes to sketching, um, there's a lot of times uh, my students struggle with is um, blocking and placing um, the objects uh, in a paper. So the thing is, you have to think about a focal point and you can also start with a big shape as well. My focal point is the CN Tower. Once I establish it, from that I constantly compare other things which is close to it. Again, we don't have to be exactly close to our reference. And uh, we can arrange our buildings um, as we want it because it's our painting and we're designing in a such a way that as it pleases us. And that's the most important thing while sketching this. Let's um, start applying the washes for the buildings. Again, this is our first wash. So when you think about the first wash, think about the light or the lightest wash. So when I think about the lightest wash is that the buildings which are casting on our um, on the building as well as on the ferris wheel again when i'm doing it i'm thinking as a one single shape if there is any other different color i'm also mixing that as well again um there's one thing you have to keep in mind while approaching this painting or painting with me is just to keep it loose don't worry about things going around bleeding against each other with other colors you have to let go and paint this so that's how you get confident and that's how you can paint loose the other thing I would have done is using some kind of circular shape to create this um, circular shapes of the ferris wheel uh, because I'm um, doing a free hand and which is really hard to do it but I recommend you guys can do it and for the colors I'm only using yellow ochre and a little bit of red in it and on the greens. The other thing I also mentioned is that um, I sped up this video at least uh, four or five times so I'm doing it a little bit faster and you can see the layering of the sky it has three values. There is a lighter value in the middle, there is a darker value at the top, and there is a mid-tone value at the bottom. So what I mean by that, the darkest value is at the top, the lightest value in the middle, and the mid-tone value or the mid-grays are in the bottom of the thing. Again, there is one thing that's really, really painful to do in watercolor is painting around the shapes. Especially with the ferris wheel, I have to be a little bit uh, uh, careful to maintain that shape and capturing that shape. Um, this is where... Uh, you can use any kind of opaque medium and again this is where um, the recipe of being loose comes in place and in not not focused on details and painting as it is just capturing the essence and just leaving the space around it and you can see that as soon as i was able to paint around the shape you can see that it also act as a frame for our buildings as well as for the ferris wheel and you can see that once i am um, happy with the wash and uh, for the top part now i'm going to going adding a, a darker value on top of it again um, our reference looks a little bit uh gray and it looks super dark but i don't as i said i don't paint things as it is and you shouldn't either so you can express your painting your values um as far as you want but while doing this there's one thing we have to keep in mind is creating depth and you can see that um, even though the colors are a little bit different i'm using a French ultramarine blue and Ludbra Syrian blue in it to get this really nice um, vibrant color at the bottom of the skies. And even though it looks darker and it will go dull when the wash is dry. Now we established um, the first wash of our uh, painting, uh, that is the building wash, the sky. Now I'm kind of adding uh, the mid tone value, or you can also call as a shadow. 
So this is where you can add the Docker values, the next Docker value, because in Warkler, we have to layer it slowly. We shouldn't have a rush the process of um, going and adding details with Docker. So you start with the light wash, the lightest value, the midtone value, and the Docker value at the end. And uh, you can see that now I'm kind of like going in or layering up on another wash. And this can also act as a shadow pass as well, or the midtone shadow as well. But as soon as you can see that, as soon as we apply a wash on the building, for the buildings, um, for the warmer colors, I'm using yellow ochre and a little bit of red in it. And you can use a uh, red copper or cadmium red or burnt sienna as well. And you can see that um, for the green buildings, I'm using a lot of green. And you can also use any green as well, but I have sap green in my palette, so I'm using sap green. Or else you can use um, um, cobalt blue and a little bit of yellow ochre in it to create that wash as well. And make sure that you mix a lot of um, blue in it so you can get this warmish uh, green color for our buildings. Again, you can see that um, when I'm adding the details, I'm not worried about being accurate to my reference. I'm not cared about capturing each individual windows and each individual details or rails in there. Again, I'm thinking everything in as a one single shape and I think uh, that's it. Now we finish the second wash and uh, now establish um, this, uh, the shadow pass or the shadow wash. Um, so this is where like we can add like some more darker details. So the second wash is kind of like where we add the midtone uh, details. So now we can layer it, the darker value on top of it. Again, if you see the CN tower by itself at the top part, which is the middle part of the CN tower, and you can see that there is some of the islets which is happening on the three corners, like on the sides and in the middle. But I want to make sure that I leave white bit um, for that one. So now you can see that I'm adding the shadow side. For the shadow side, since this is kind of like in a warmish stone, so I'm using burnt amber, and you can also use sepia as well. And I'll be there using the same um, color pattern for uh, the same thing for other shadow, uh, uh, other shadow uh, for the buildings as well. And you can see that as soon as we add this um, shadow pass, the next darker value, you can see that things started looking three-dimensional. And this is another thing um, a lot of people struggle with and this also helps you to um, uh, not to um, overwork. So whenever I do painting like this, I want to make sure that um, my shape looks three dimensional and that's one of my goal. And even when I teach, I tell my students, um, you have to think that um, once you skin to your eyes and see your reference, and does it look three dimensional? If it doesn't look three dimensional and check for the values, if the values doesn't align, you just go on um, layer the value of a darker value. And this is why watercolors can be tricky as well as fast um, because you have to think um, uh, in layers and think in values. Um, you have to start with the light wash and the darkest wash slowly to get the layering. And you can see that I'm using the same um, exact um, shadow color, burnt amber and sepia to add the shadows for the first wheel as well. Okay, um, let's add some trees, um, which is the foreground. Again, um, there's one thing to keep in mind um, when painting um, uh, any painting, like especially cityscape or even in landscape. Things which are close to us have a warmer color and it also tend to have a lot of a darker value. So just by doing that, you can also see that it also create this really nice contrast between the light against dark. So again, one thing um, I usually keep in mind um, is to create contrast between the foreground, midground and the background. So now let's go and do um, another wash for the buildings because um, the building lacks the three-dimensional quality. So, so this wash, what I try to do is try to create some gradients for this building so that it doesn't look like a one flat shape. And because the light is eating the buildings and at the bottom there's a lot of things which they're anchoring, so it creates a contact shadow to the top. Okay, now go on, let's uh, add some eyelets. Uh, I use this trick called credit card trick. So I put a paint um, on side of the credit card and I, I make lines for the Ferris wheels. And this is the pass I do it at the end. I, can, I call it as final pass or a detail pass. Just go on, try to add the tiny details. For example, the people on the Ferris wheel, as you can see, I'm adding it. 
and again like i'm checking the values and how they are and i'm adding it and even for the windows all of the tiny details which exist from my reference again i'm not being true to my reference and um, i paint whatever it feels like i'm just trying to capture the essence from my reference and not copying as it is but you can see that just by you know painting loose just focusing on the washes and blending it properly and layering it we are able to get this um really nice uh, impressionistic painting of a Toronto skyline and again um there are a few things you have to keep in mind uh, while approaches painting is just think everything in shapes first and do the first wash the second wash the mid-tone wash and the darker wash and the detail wash at the end and uh, this is how my painting looks like at the end i usually um, finish a pass like this capturing the essence the next day i go back and add some more details if i want i will leave it as it is but you can see that um, we took something from a reference and we didn't copy it as it is yet it looks like same as a reference but we capture this really nice evening glow of torna skyline with all the essential details it's there so now it's your turn take my reference or use your own reference and apply the techniques what i've showed today and uh, good luck with your painting thank you once again for watching this painting tutorial Please feel free to share your thoughts on the video in the comment section below. If you have any other watercolor related topics you'd like me to cover, reach out to me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe button to become a part of our learning community. By subscribing, you'll receive weekly upload notifications and stay updated on our channel and share with your fellow artists, friends and family. And uh, good luck with your painting, folks.